Hello, and congratulations. You've made it to the first step of learning how to care for your day gecko. But hold your horses real quick there, viewer. I know you have an aptitude of confidence now that you've passed the first step, but there's still many to go before you can properly care for these Geico look-alike animals. How many steps are there, you ask? Well, there are approximately five steps into learning. Number one, the enclosure size. Number two, heating and lighting. Number three, the humidity the animal needs. Number four, the diet the animal eats. And then lastly, how to decorate the enclosure to make sure that your day gecko absolutely loves it. So sit down, buckle up, and don't forget to tie those shoes. Let's get started with how to care for your day gecko in 2022. Kicking things off, let's start with number one, the enclosure size. Now when it comes to day geckos, they are an arboreal gecko and quite an active gecko if I might add. Now that I've exhibited my pair for a couple of months now, I've noticed that they really like dashing around, moving around. They're never in just one spot at a the time. They're usually at at least three, four, even five places throughout the day. With that being said, I would recommend nothing less than a 20 to 29 gallon as an aquarium or the equivalent being an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra. This is going to provide the lateral length that the animal is going to need to explore, making sure you keep those branches also horizontally but vertically as well, while giving the animal enough arboreal room to really climb up top where it really likes to be. Personally for me, I'm not too big of a fan of using aquariums for day geckos. We do have one of my crimson line pairs in them and it's kind of a pain getting the food out. You're going over top which kind of scares the animal so it's going to start scattering and then when you open the enclosure you leave a pretty big gap where the animal can get out of. So with that being said, I really prefer the front opening enclosures. That be it something like the Zoomat or Exoterra or anything like a Zen Habitats enclosure. The 2x2x2 two by two by two would be absolutely perfect for a day gecko itself. It's very strange because I just so happen to be an affiliate with Zen Habitat, so if you're looking for a day gecko enclosure, why don't you uh, head on down? That will be the only sponsorship moment in this video. We can move along now. Moving on to the next topic at hand, let's get into number two, the heating and lighting requirements you need for your day gecko. Geckos like it warm, a lot warmer than most gecko species that people are usually working with. With that being said, they usually like the temperature somewhere around the 80 to 85 degrees as a temperature gradient, that going from the hot side and then about a high 70s for the cooler end, which for an arboreal gecko would be cooler around the 77, 78, and then the higher getting higher, higher into the 80s. Then with a the light basting temperature of somewhere around that 88 to 90 degrees. Over here at DBCB Exotics, we have a lot of geckos, well, an entire room stuffed full of them. And with that being said, it would make a lot more sense to utilize ambient heating than it would getting each individual light. So this is why you won't see my enclosures with a bass line because I keep my ambient room somewhere around that 80 degree area with the UVB acting as that bass line getting that higher temp into the higher 80s. If you don't happen to have a 1500 watt space heater heating that enclosure at all times and you're using just the regular air temp, okay guy, then I would recommend somewhat of a bassing light or bassing heat spot making sure that animal can get those upper temps that it so deserves. A couple of different ways you can heat the animal. I find the best way is just to use floodlights or basking lights. You can get them at a reptile shop or you can save yourself the headache of reptile bulbs and the money that reptile bulbs cost and just head over to your local Home Depot or Lowe's and purchase some of those PAR 38 floodlights. They work a lot better. They're going to span a wider area than your reptile bulbs and they burn out a lot less often. They'll still burn out on you like any reptile bulb, but it happens to be a little bit less than your standard reptile pet shop buy. Heating is only one section of this topic. That next section is going to be lighting. Now, far from just getting the PAR 38 floodlight, you are also going to need other lighting. With Deacagus being a diurnal species, at least I hope because I just said it, they're going to require UVB because they are out during the day basking in the sunlight that not only heats them but also provides them with UVB. With that being said, grabbing a UVB bulb is a must for the day geckos. Not only is it good for them, you're not going to run into any of those things like metabolic bone disease, which is an absolute thing you want to avoid, but also you can see their colors a lot better. I've noticed day geckos under UVB with that green fluorescent, that neon green under that fluorescent light, man, they are just shimmering. They're an absolutely beautiful species and it's definitely that something worth the what 70 bucks 50 60 bucks uh, every six months getting that linear t5 bulb and you're good to go and then you really get to experience the beauty that is the day gecko 
As for UVBs for day geckos, you really just want to go for the best because the off brands or lesser ones are still like 20, 30, 40 bucks, or you could just shell out an extra 30 and you get the best of the best for your animal. It seems like, a, you know, you save 30 bucks, but you're not doing as well, you know, just get the best stuff. With that being said, that is recommending the T5 High Output UVB, the 5.0, because of course these are as a jungle, jungle animal, not a desert animal, as the zoo med terms uh, state and apply. So with that being said, the Repti UVB 5.0 or the Arcadia bulbs are the best of the best on the market. Get that T5 high output bulb and you are good to go. But moving on, there's still plenty of things to go over and that is going to bring us to number three, the humidity requirements that day geckos require to have fun. I mean, like, it's not just to have fun, it's a necessity too, but I just thought I'd be a little more whimsical with it. Wait till you hear this, boys and girls. This tropical gecko not only likes high heat, but also high humidity. I know, it's a complete shock, but let's get into it. Now, day gecko's humidity requirements are going to be somewhere around the 60 to 80%. Let me explain that, because people are probably like, well, is it 60 or is it 80, Dakota? Hold your horses, I'm getting to it. Now, when it comes to day gecko humidity, you are going to want to be misting once to twice a day. Now, that humidity is going to spike up when you do that misting, getting that to around that 80%. And then throughout the day, it's going to slowly die off into the 60%, and then in which case you just repeat the cycle over and over and over and over for years and years until finally your day gecko has all the humidity it could ever want through its entire lifespan. Welcome to owning reptiles, folks. We think, we think we we keep them, but in fact, they keep us on a strict regiment and schedule as our enslaved people to have the perfect environment that they require. There are a few ways you can increase the humidity in your day gecko's enclosure. Maybe you went out for the aquarium, not the nice zen habitats, which I mean, I guess, but now you're running into the problem of too much ventilation. Your day gecko humidity is off. It's not working for you. Well, don't worry there, viewer. I got a nice little card that's either over there or maybe it's over here. I can never remember where it goes, but that's going to show you all the humidity ways and techniques to boost that humidity in your enclosure. I'll just give a brief summary for people that already have a bit of a hand for it. It's a deep substrate, misting, misting systems, uh, covering part of the ventilation for using aquariums, and so on. That goes a lot more in depth, so if you are a little bit unsure make sure to check that video out but moving on we almost have it all figured out on how to care for our day gecko and that is going to bring us to number four the diet requirements that these beautiful beautiful gecko lizards require now, when it comes to the diet diet requirements it's probably no surprise to you it's an insectivore it's either eating the rapashi or pangea or it's eating insects like pretty much any other gecko it's unless toke geckos then in that case you're feeding your fingers every so often to appease them in order to give you their offspring why I decided to become a toke breeder, I will never know. Our day gecko feeding is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. It's pretty much a crested gecko feeding, but you also feed bugs. A little bit more bugs than you would with uh, a crested gecko. These guys actually enjoy the bugs. You don't need them to get accustomed to it. You don't have day geckos that some like bugs, but some don't like bugs. Every single day gecko goes nuts for bugs. It's with that being said that you should utilize a staple of either the Pangea or Rapashi. Personally, I like the Pangea, but whatever floats your boat. And there at all times, changing it out every other day to make sure your animal always has fresh food. But also adding crickets at least twice a week to make sure it also has that fun hunting experience and again that variety in the diet. I do believe that insects aren't just a little treat you should be given, but they also should be added as a staple alongside with the Pangea. The Pangea is going to make sure they have all the vitamins and minerals that they're going to need, but then the dusted crickets are also going to provide some extra nutritional environment requirements and they're also going to be just a fun thing to watch your gecko run around the whole enclosure and watch them hunt. It's a really fun thing. As far as insects go, it's really just the same as any other feeder, you know, crickets, roaches, whether that be dubia, lobster, red runners, you've got your worms, superworms, and mealworms as a little bit more of a treat, and then you've got like waxworms, phoenix worms, I mean pr pretty much any bug you usually feed any other lizard. You can also feed the day geckos. I find they like a little more active of a feeder, so I usually use crickets, but whatever floats your boats, make sure to use the treat feeders less often because of course those higher in fat can lead to medical uh, bad stuff. Yeah, that's the official term for it, Dakota. Medical bad stuff. All right. <laughs> and here we are. The last thing you need to need to know to take care of your day gecko. We've come a long way in these past five minutes or so. We've learned the enclosure size. The, please don't mind the bird. 
heating and lighting, the humidity, and then finally the diet. But now getting into the last thing at hand, let's get into it. Number five, how to decorate your enclosure to make sure your animal is going to be happy and healthy. Now, if it wasn't clear enough in all the other steps we talked about, these animals are tropical animals. And with that being said, they come from a place that has, wait for it, trees. I know, an arboreal animal sitting on trees. Absolutely ridiculous, but let's get into it. Since these animals like to bask on trees and branches and things of that nature, you should be utilizing it within captivity. That being said, you're going to want to offer a lot of vertical and horizontal perches, going in each and every way, making sure your lizard can climb up, go around, lay on branches, climb up onto branches, and not just be sticking on the glass. Now, one of the bad things with most gecko species is when you're not utilizing enough branches or areas for him to horizontally climb on, they're going to utilize the glass and usually stay vertically and when an animal stays vertically for too long their tail starts to flop over becoming what is commonly known as floppy tail syndrome or FTS. An easy way to avoid that is just use horizontal perches. Best way to do that is to put them especially over the UVB basking area. These guys absolutely love basking in their UVB. We have a nice cork bark down there so they can both lay on it just chill, absorb those nice rays and then a bunch of just other little branches that they can climb on, hide on. We got some cork tubes they can hide into if they're feeling a little shy some foliage so they can get away and hide away if they feel like it. They never do. These guys are really awesome, but we have it for what they want because if they're feeling a little shy one day, hey, maybe they want to hide in those plants and that's okay. At the end of the day, day geckos are a pretty simple animal to take care of. Keep them hot, keep them humid, feed them bugs and pangea, and then make sure you've got some branches in your enclosure and you're good to go. I don't really think these guys are a very hugely, you know, sensitive animal that you have to make sure everything's right. They're fairly an easy animal to take care of and get accustomed to. I just think they're an amazing species, man. I had my doubts going into day geckos from all the stereotypes going around, you know, day geckos being skittish of course them dropping their tails and dropping their scales very easily they're definitely an unhandleable pet just a display you'll never see them blah 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 that is not the case i found when i work with my day geckos they are awesome they are very um What's the word? They're, they're inquisitive. They really like to watch me, but not like watch and run away. Like just observe me, watch me. Whenever I move the food and put the food in, they're not running around, they're just watching. I give them little chin scratches. I can hand feed them little worms when it's the time for the treat. And all in all, I just think they're an amazing gecko that definitely more people should own. Well, folks, that is gonna do it for today. How to care for your day gecko in 2022. It's like any other care guide out there. However, I put some uh, comedy relief if you didn't notice, and it's also 20. 22, so that makes it a better care guide than the other ones. Now it's your turn. Leave me a comment in the comment section on what you think about this care guide. Did I knock it out of the park or was it just a uh... What was the comedy really just cringy and not not funny at all? I really need to know this guys You guys need to put me in my place if it's getting too cringy. You gotta let me know It's so actually interested in getting some day geckos. We breed day geckos We've got quite a few babies going on right now They're gonna be launching on our morph market before they go on morph market Of course, they're going to go on my patreon patreon.com slash dbcb exotics If you're looking to get the first-hand look at our day gecko babies and potentially purchase them before I let them out for the public Make sure to head down there at the link in the description below and join today. Well, folks, I guess it's my time to leave. We've had a lot of fun here today, but hey, if you want to see some more stuff, there's some videos right there. Um, I'm going to go back to where I usually belong, and that's acting like a lizard next to all my lizards. So no more, no bar more bipedalism for Dakota. It's just on all fours. Thank you and goodbye.